I've got this area in the closet that needs to be taken care of. So I'm going to start with the six foot piece, one by six. I'm going to use this and split it right in half. So if it's six foot long, let's cut it off at the three foot mark. When I do that, I also want to make and use my square to get a nice, perfect straight line across the board. That'll give me a good reference for when I cut it. Now, I like to use my miter saw. You can use a jigsaw or a skill saw. Either way will work as long as you get a good cut. Let me teach you a secret about sanding. Take a pencil and without making too hard of a mark, put squiggly lines all across your board. That is gonna let you know that you've sanded the board enough in order to stain it. The wood that comes right from a hardware store can't usually just be stained right away. In this example right here, you're gonna notice after we clear the sawdust that we got it sanded just enough so it'll accept some stain. Now I do need some blocks on this board and we're gonna cut four of these. I'll show you where they go later once we get them cut, but it gives us some space when we put the curtain rod on the board. Once we get these cut, it is time to stain our wood. Now I'm going with like a little bit of a cherry stain here. The only regret I have when I was staining this was not using a pre-stain. So you can see some dark spots on the board. Wish I did use some pre-stain, but I think it's still gonna turn out really nice. Once we get it stained, it's back to those four blocks that we cut earlier. I'm gonna use one as a spacer to set this in place. I don't wanna put it all the way against the wood. It gives it a little bit nicer look. I'm just gonna use three little brad nails, make sure I don't go through the boards to hold it in place. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Again, using one of the blocks as a spacer to mark it. it doesn't take much to hold it, just three little brad nails. Once I get that there, what we're gonna do is at the bottom of the board, we're gonna measure and mark and pre-drill for the curtain rod holder. Now, I'm gonna give you a little example of how to put these in place and make it easy. When you're putting the first screw in, never put it all the way through. Go ahead and put it halfway so that your bracket is not too hard to move around if you need to. The second screw, put it all the way down and then go back to the first one and put it down. Now, we can set the curtain rod in there and it's time to mark and measure it. I'm gonna use a metal saw blade. Now, go light and easy on this. Don't go back and forth. Just make a little mark couple times back and forth before you go, cut it off. Now, it's gonna be a little rough, but don't worry about that. These curtain rods come with little caps you put on the end. We're gonna put our final pre-drill in to go ahead and put it on the wall. As you can see, I've got two of these boards and I'm using a level to make sure they're straight. Once I got them installed, put the curtain rods in and start inserting the shoes. It's gonna save a lot of space on the floor and it looks great right in the back. You can make these as big and as long as you want. I hope this inspired you to build your own DIY shoe rack. I hope you enjoyed that last episode, but don't hit the stop button yet. First, subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes and stay tuned. We got another one coming right up. Do you have a bed with no frame? Do you need more storage space in your bedroom? Well, let's make a platform bed with storage. Let's start with the storage part of this project. I purchased the three cube storage unit and put it together in 10 minutes. Now for the bed frame. I painted two one by 12 inch pieces of pine to use at the sides of the frame. I needed something to elevate the mattress, so using two by fours, I cut to size and used a Craig jig to make two U legs. I placed them at the head of the bed and in the middle of the bed. I laid a piece of three quarter inch plywood on top of the U legs and screwed them into the plywood. I placed a storage unit at the foot of the bed and screwed that into the plywood. The painted 1x12s were attached to the U legs using brads. I then laid a 1x2 beside the plywood on the top and overhung the 1x12s and nailed them in place. Then I laid a 1x6 on top to hide the seam and nailed that in place. After the entire bed was done, I painted everything white. At 
the foot of the bed, the storage unit wasn't as wide as the actual bed, and there were gaps on either side. So to close those gaps, I used two one by twos as a frame, and then I nailed another one by two along the side and a one by 12 to cover the gap. I then nailed another one by two at the top to finish. After that, everything was painted white. Now that the bed frame was complete, it was time to make the headboard. I had a piece of half inch plywood cut to size. I measured and cut one by four inch pine to frame the plywood. I just nailed those in place. I added one by two inch pine to each side and then a one by four inch piece of pine at the top. The headboard was then painted white. Once the paint was dry, I added one by two to either side and screw them fast to the two by four U legs underneath the bed. Although this project has a lot of pieces, it was so easy to make. I hope this inspires you to elevate your bed to the next level. 40 years ago, my grandma painted this wonderful painting and I want it to last forever and make it a keepsake. Now we're going to start on one corner of the painting and we're going to go to all four corners. We've got to measure so we can build our frame around the back. On the top, it's 19 inches. And what we're going to need is two pieces. We've got to cut these at a 45 degree angle to match the bevel of the painting. So we start with one end, cut it, measure the 19 inches, and we're going to also cut a 45 degree corner on that piece. Remember, we got to cut two pieces. Once you get it cut, check to make sure it's nice and 45 degrees with all of it. Now it's time for the nails. I love using air guns and so the nails had to be just enough to go through them all. Easy to use, just load them in the gun and then we're going to put some glue on all the ends. Nails work great, but the glue is also going to make it strong. Put all the corners together and as you can see, they line up really nice, especially if you cut them right in the beginning. So we're going to use the nail gun and we're going to do all the corners. You can use two or three in each side, but once you get it together and the glue dries, it's gonna make it super strong. Now it's time to put some shelves in. I wanna put one piece right up the middle, cut it, put it in, and then we're gonna build two little shelves. Hold these together with some brad nails also. We're gonna go ahead and sand it. Sanding is a great way for the stain to go ahead and penetrate the wood and you can get rid of all the lettering on this board. This is a one by three, so the painting won't stick out too far from the wall. Once you get it sanded up, it's time to stain. Go ahead and choose the color that closely matches the frame color that you're gonna put this on. Once you do it, go ahead and use a brush or I like to use a towel. I can dip it and it goes a lot farther than using a brush. Also, if it gets too thick or too thin, I can just wipe on more or less. If you have any excess stain, make sure you wipe it off. Now it's time to get some hinges. I wanted to use some decorative hinges and what I'm going to do on the frame is mark it and drill it out. It takes the screws better and I won't worry about splitting the wood. When we put them on, if you pre-drill and you do it with the right size drill bit, you don't have to use the drill to put the screws on. You can just use a screwdriver. Now once it's on the frame, go ahead and drop it on the frame right there and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing and drill it out. Put the screws in. Once you get them nice and tight, it's time to put that hanger back on. Just go ahead and nail those little nails right in and then we can hang it on the wall. Once it's hung up, now we've got the shelves in and it makes a great location for all your keepsakes, especially for me, anything that has to do with my grandmother. This thing will make a wonderful keepsake and it's something that I can pass down from generation to generation. I can't wait to give it to one of my daughters someday. And the great thing, it's a great showpiece. From the front, it looks absolutely great. And on the side, it doesn't stick too far from the wall. I hope you enjoyed this DIY project as much as I did making it. Thank you for watching Home Talk, and we'll see you next time.